Okay, let's do a little panel, and then we have a lunch break, and we uh, now are um, uh, doing a little experiment because we develop ideas how we can all help Eike to build gigafactories for solar super technology in Europe because we want to compete again with the Chinese. Yeah, there's no Chinese in the room, so let's think about uh, what we can do together here in Europe. Okay, Christian and Alois, please join. What about the seating arrangement? I think, Eike, you need to sit next to me. I think then uh, next to you is Lars, and maybe uh, Christian, and then Alois. Yeah, do you, what do you think about this? Good? <laughs> you don't need a clicker. <clears throat> so, um, Eike, what is the current status of the X gigawatt? How far did you get with the idea? Did you raise any money? Did you recruit people? How much commitment do you have from people that you know? Well, as a matter of fact, we started this whole uh, uh, venture in fall of 2013. In the uh, first half year of 2014, we created a very competent uh, um, uh, corporation based on three research institutions, Fraunhofer Ise, Ines from CEA in France, and CSEM from Switzerland, with industry partners mainly from the supply side and with a very strong industry partner from France. But then in August of last year, a horrible thing happened. This industry partner from France, he has a core business in the nuclear industry. Areva. Areva, we can say it, yes. And they decided that they have to concentrate the business on the core business, which was the money-losing nuclear business. Good luck to them. And, <laughs> right, and uh, cut off their legs in uh, photovoltaics. So uh, since that time, what we are looking at very hard is a key industrial partner. You know, we have many leads to investors, many interesting investors, but most investors say if you want to go to a gigawatt factory, you need to have a strong company, a company like Bosch and Siemens, and I can use these names because they are out of the opportunity space right now. And I think the current situation is that the recognition of the opportunities which I have presented to all of you is not yet there, and we have a big problem with policy in Germany. You know, photovoltaics in Germany is at the moment dead. 60 megawatts of monthly installations in the months of March is ridiculous for Germany. The reason for this is that the current government is afraid to really promote photovoltaics because before there was a call, this is too expensive, we are paying six cents per kilowatt hours for this EEG uh, surplus. So the political climate in Germany has been completely spoiled for this type of venture. And I am working hard on all levels, uh, down at investors as well as politicians in order to change the situation. We need to realize the opportunities which are at hand. And as a matter of fact, our big industry partner, Meyer Burger, is getting flooded with requests from Asian countries. And they will not hold on too long to say, we want to have our first big scale manufacturing here in Europe, which is up to now what they have uh, on, their, on, their, on their work. And uh, at the moment, the plan is, instead of making an X gigawatt pilot production, Maya Burger is promoting the rest of the technology development to have it ready. And then we are still ready for a gigawatt uh, scale factory in Europe, but they will be as well ready to sell uh, into other countries. So it's not yet solved. Many, many interesting leads, interesting leads as well to um, Near East as well as to the United States because there are investors who are thinking in different ways than the people here influenced to our, from our negative public policy. But uh, we have to see it. I, I fight very hard, I can tell you that, and I present, I mean, this IEA uh, S-shaped curve. When I saw that first, I fell from the chair, you know, because I had never looked at the numbers in this way, and I think it is really, really stupid if we don't grab this opportunity right here in Europe. And I'm very happy in the interaction with Losh, because you see, investors are not so excited about the next generation of crystalline silicon PV technology. So they are much more excited about completely new approaches. So I think 
we are going to team up more strongly to go together to Brussels and to really bring both in. You know, on the one hand side, the manufacturing of today's top-end crystalline silicon technology, but providing as well the basis for real production. And this is the key issue. Europe cannot live with doing, on, doing only R&D. We need to have large volume production here in Europe, and this is what we have to fight for. Christian, what do you think about the idea? Do you think we should do it? Do you have a couple of ideas you can share? Yeah, sure, of course. And who do you think um, could become investors? I think mm. utilities, for example, could be helpful. Yeah. So um, I, I have tons of sympathy for that idea. Um, uh, I can I fought hard uh, in the yeah. good old days uh, when, when, when the whole ecosystem collapsed uh, and, and prices fell uh, out of the skies. And, and the reason why the European industry uh, was on the losing end uh, of the story was not because of lack of R&D, was not because of lack of sales channels, it was because of lack of financing, yes. uh, which the Chinese had in overabundance, both on a corporate level. Uh, each of those Ying Li's and solar funds of this world got many multiples of revenues in terms of debt per year from Chinese-controlled state banks. And they also had the financing on the customer end, where they could pre-finance the rollouts of those big sort of power plants, which made it very easy for customers to decide what they chose. And the Europeans, unfortunately, were on the short end of that equation, and many of them died. So I've, I've, I've tons of synergy to, to bring back, uh, tons of uh, sympathy to, to bring back the manufacturing capability. Uh, I am personally at the moment, this is now not with my business angel hat of this morning, but with my Bellington hat on, uh, to uh, do uh, not a giga, but a 100 megawatt facility for a breakthrough new technology in the organics space with Heliatech, which I'm on the board of for, for a couple of years. And now, uh, closing the circle, back to your question, uh, I see how difficult it is to get a financing package for that together. Uh, we have, with friends, invested 45 millions already uh, into the pilot plant, which works, and we have ready customers who would uh, subscribe to the whole take-up of the first scale plant, uh, which we have available. We have uh, many uh, building integrated niche applications that do not compete with any of the CZ uh, stuff that was shown here. Uh, and I have now spent my last 12 months uh, in trying to get a package together for these guys to, to build the first plant having the customer commitments, having the working technology, but not having the financing partners yet. And so, so I've now tried for 12 months uh, to, to uh, speak to first European players, utilities, uh, Siemens and Bosch, et cetera, then to um, uh, Arabian players. Uh, I'm now speaking to Japanese and Chinese players. And it is not trivial, because the strings attached, the farther you go to the east, are increasing, because they say, sure, uh, send the technology to us, and then we are happy to invest some money. So, uh, to cut a long story short, um, financing this undertaking yeah. is a huge challenge. I have a couple of small ideas, but, but don't have a breakthrough answer, because if I had a breakthrough answer, I would have already applied it to my own situation. Glow is, is a different case. We just send more money to Glow at, at the moment that at least doesn't require hundreds of millions, that only requires <laughs> many tens of millions. Uh, but in the hundreds of millions, it gets really difficult. What do you think about it, Alois? Who and how can we find money for this great idea of a gigafactory? Um, yeah, I have uh, similarly yeah, a lot of sympathy for the idea. And um, you just I, it would be great to get, to get the money. You know, yeah, we, we met a few times, and, uh, <laughs> but um, and we, we also in Zuc, we also did uh, several investments in the in the solar in the PV industry, and some successfully, very successfully, and some also where the, where we were uh, unsuccessful. And um, Give me one when, when when you look at, at the reasons why, uh, especially what, what created the problems and the issues, you know, you mentioned one of them. I think another problem was also, and you are facing it already to a certain extent, in my view, is the fact that you develop the best technology here, R&D, 
you have the equipment manufacturers that are eager to integrate it. Yeah. And when, uh, when they were doing the equipment for RSC, Solar World, and all the others in Europe, they had a very short term of non-compete, where they're not allowed to sell to others. But the day the non-compete of a year or two was gone, there was the first plant already set up in China because they had access to cheap funding. Yeah. And the big issue is when you talk with, you mentioned one name as an as a, as a equipment manufacturer in that sense somewhat, yeah, because Mayaburger is now of, can fully yeah. Yeah. provide equipment. The same will happen. And, and the same will happen that you are trying, uh, there is a risk, you know, the, and, and the, the difference to, the, to Airbus is they are controlling more technology. They have suppliers, of course, but they are controlling more the, the core technology and are also producing it here, you know, just to set up a manufacturing thing without R&D and equipment, you know. So the big, the big question is, what's the core of your, the core knowledge of, of your a gigafactory, you know, if you have Tesla's gigafactory, they, they have a core knowledge, you know. Of course, they are also buying the, the cells from Panasonic and another supplier, but they know how to bring it together and, and, and how to do the battery software uh, systems, management systems. But here, the big question is, what will this new group has as a core? Just to do the production, you, then, you know, the equipment manufacturers will sell it tomorrow. To, to, to Asia so and, to, and, and to the to, uh, Middle East and countries, or wherever, wherever they can, of course, this is their business purpose. And this, in my view, is, is, is a very difficult uh, question I that you should solve the first. The technology core is really the possibility to create premium modules, that is, modules with 300, 350, 400 watt power, at prices which are absolutely competitive with yeah. the cheap Chinese modules. And of course, you should keep in mind this rapidly growing world market. You know, today we have a 50 gigawatt world market. 2020, it will be 100, maybe even 150 gigawatt world market. So even if the Chinese will as well acquire this type of production equipment, the growing world market will be very, very eager to get our technology, because the people in Saudi Arabia who are really talking about 10 gigawatts in India, they are talking about 20 gigawatts of production capacity, they say we do not want to buy this from China. We want to buy this from Europe. So if we can demonstrate the gigawatt factory with all these technical features which I mentioned here in Europe, then they will buy, just make a second gigawatt factory in Abu Dhabi, make another one in Bangalore and in India and in South America, South Africa, because all countries of the world in the, in the Sun Belt are extremely hungry for this technology. But I think in this case, Maya Burger should develop it, you know, because they will then they also sell, sell the next equipment for the one in Bangalore and then the one in Saudi Arabia. Uh, because if, yeah. if they supply the equipment and you have a, um, a unit that is just doing the production, you can have but it anywhere, is, you know, in this global world. If you don't world. have any production anymore in Europe, then Maya Burger will have no reason to stay in Europe. <coughs> then they will set up shop in China or wherever. But and of course, if we lose the equipment manufacturer, then why do we do research in Europe, you know? We need to keep our food in the mass production. But I, I, I see this point. Yeah. But you know, when you need a, a demonstration plant in Europe, and this yeah. is what I, what, what I hear, yeah? so we, the demonstration plant, yeah. then the suppliers need to build it. The, it, because no, the supplier, because they, will, they will then do the, the subsequent see, the uh, plants too. The supplier they will do is it. ready to build a pilot line and a demo plant, but the supplier does not want to go into the business of selling gigawatts of PV modules which would be in competition to their own customers. So the supplier is willing to cooperate with us and we have a very good relationship to Meyer Burger, but they want us to build production here in Europe, you know, and they are very good willing 
but absolutely But you see clear. the dilemma. Huh? There is absolutely, but here, the boundary condition is really the further rapidly growing market, because one thing is clear, mm -hmm. with each cent per kilowatt hour, electricity prices going down. Now, five cents per kilowatt hours have already been quoted. Soon it will be four cents per kilowatt hour. The market size will increase much faster than even the optimistic predictions. Actually, my predictions, when I look at my old slides from five years ago, were consistently too pessimistic. Nobody, nobody expected what is coming. And the reason this is now sheer economics, it makes no more sense to build a nuclear power plant for the five billion dollars of a nuclear power plant, you can build production capacity for annual module yeah. production of seven gigawatts. Mm -hmm. Each year, seven additional gigawatts. And it takes time till politicians, till the population understand this, but this time will be not infinite. So it will happen, but the question is really, will we have our the, step in If it? I may add on that, the Brits, the, 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 the government, Yes. Ma made a guarantee to yeah. fund yeah. Yeah. the new nuclear power yeah. plant they want to build with 20 cents per kilowatt but they are hour, crazy. You know, 12 cents they per kilowatt crazy. hour. They will stop if you can produce it, it for five, okay? If you have enough money, yes. you can do it. They will not let's finish. But anyway, they want to leave second. the European yeah. Union. Let's listen to so. him. I, I think he has a great idea. idea. <clears throat> I think now we're talking to the, the top end of the production, really, to make Europe competitive in, in really yeah. producing uh, on, on a very large scale. Uh, but I think it's important that Europe also thinks of the need to create new technologies, yeah. new companies producing the materials, the, the key and enabling Very technologies. Yeah. And uh, I think one aspect that should be talked about in this community as well, the, the need to have facilities where, say, young companies can develop from coming out of the research environment and without risking to, to you know, go bankrupt, have, have uh, uh, easy access to facilities where they very favorable terms can use advanced equipment yeah. and also having long term and maybe yeah. some evergreen fund that will support during these yeah. difficult years and then wait until sorry the VCs will say this is worth for us to pick up and, and take the final route or to the final for this huge production yeah. so I think one shouldn't forget that part if Europe doesn't continue to produce new technologies and companies delivering these technologies to the high end, then uh, we might uh, can afford it short anyway. So, Christian, do you agree that um, the government maybe should play a role because it played the role, as you explained, in China, right? Yeah. Without the yep. strategy and the money coming from the Chinese government, wherever they got it from, I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> is, is this a way maybe not only for the German government, mm -hmm. but for many, many governments so, in Europe? So uh, this is... This is a really tricky question uh, and uh, <laughs> difficult to answer uh, in a very short time. So the, the, the issue is, um, you remember what happened when the US government decided to do that, pick a technology uh, and, and better it big time, then Solyndra happened, mm. etc. Big, big mess. Mm. Uh, what the Chinese did was they invested in turnkey technologies that were proven out by Q-cells and by SolarWatt and by REC that they worked. So there was zero technology risk. And, and that was very bankable uh, in China, and, and that they went after. What we are discussing here is a very advanced technology that, yes, will have been proven out uh, on, a, on a smaller scale on pilot projects, like with Heliotech, where we have a pilot production uh, working, everything fine. Uh, but the step is to upscale this and, and to pay for the upscaling. And this, this, this is where the financing gap comes in. This is where the easiest answer would indeed be a governmental intervention, yes, but then you need to answer the question, so which technology do we pick? Mm -hmm. What then goes into this pilot fab, that might not be a very consensual and very quick discussion, mm -hmm. uh, because even I would have two candidates to go in there, uh, and, and <laughs> Ike certainly has, has, has more. Uh, so, so that I see as a problem, the state as the technology venture capitalist who needs to decide which one of those think about a multi-technology approach. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's be creative and think about mm -hmm. a multi-technology yeah. approach the same way then Alois uh, proposed so, so? to think about R&D yes. and equipment and manufacturing all together. I exactly, yeah. so the concrete proposal to, to be a little bit constructi constructive here could be the follows, as follows. Um, a multi-technology approach back however, not primarily by governmental means, but by 
Infrastructure finance means, as part of the Juncker plan at the moment, right. as part of what MEAG, for example, in Germany is, is, is trying to achieve, and they now buy all those offshore farms, uh, we could do much simpler things uh, onshore with, with, with PV, let them front it, but with a governmental guarantee yes. if the That's thing goes bust. Yes. And, and that could be a combination that yeah. could work, yeah. so, so that there is a market mechanism in front right. and a governmental default guarantee, or if one of those technologies goes wrong, kind of guarantee. Yes. That could be a solution. Are you guys able to, to pick only one technology, or do you think it will be a multi-technology uh, future too, where different solar technologies are coming oh. together that are merging in the multi junction cells, etc.? I mean, you know, if you face it in 2025, we will have a 300 gigawatt PV market. Then even a technology which has a 1% market share will have 3 gigawatt of annual production. So in my view, harvesting solar energy will have a wide spectrum of mm -hmm. competing technologies. Mm -hmm. And the technologies then have the chance to compete and so the winners will win, you know? Yes. I showed you the concentrating PV technology, which is as well, the market share, it's uh, already much, much bigger than organic PV, but it is still nothing compared to crystalline silicon PV. And all of these technologies have a place in this rapidly growing market and then there will be the race and the technology shake out. But mm. I could well imagine that in 2050 it will be all organic PV. You know, if we find the molecules to absorb the light and to convert it with 20% efficiency, long-term stable, then we will be out. But we cannot predict this yep. and we cannot wait for this. Mm. So we develop the technology and if there is a major technology shake up, it will happen and we have to provide the opportunities for the shake ups. Yes, That's yes, the yes. key issue. And mm. I fully agree with you, credit guarantees where the first credit and due diligence is done by commercial entities, mm. but when they say, yes, we are ready to fund having them a backup guarantee, mm. maybe only of 50% of the investment. Why not? That would already be a very powerful tool to help us all. Uh, uh, Christian, uh, family offices. Mm. Yeah. We're helping you at Heliatech. That, that's true. Stefan Quant, uh, right? Stefan Quant uh, has invested. And I think year. we have some rich families in various yeah. countries in yeah. Europe. Imagine yes. we bring them to a table, make a nice Eco Summit family conference, for example. <laughs> Let, let's, let's, however, to spoil this a little bit, let's, however, not forget about the quantities of money we are talking here. Yeah, this, is, this is not 10 million, this is not 100 million. This is a lot more. This is a couple of hundred million uh, we are talking here. And that is um, non-trivial. Uh, at uh, Heliatech, uh, I only would need 40 million externally to build my at scale fab. And we have a couple of uh, family offices on board, as you just said. Uh, it's not so trivial for them to cough up I mean, that what, kind of money. What we would need is four investors at 50 million each, you know, to have the 200 million equity and the 200 million debt that yeah. would work and that would do it. Yeah. So 50 million is still within reach in, in all of these mm. possibilities. Did you already have uh, direct contact with big industrial families in Germany and outside of Germany? Yeah, yeah. Wallenberg, we heard yes, yesterday, yes. for example. Yes, I contacted Stefan Quant, whom I know personally very yeah. well, uh, because of his Solavat engagement. Yeah. Uh, but uh, at that time, he was not interested in another PV, so you must have hit him at a better time, you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's all about people too, right? Do you think um, that the CEO of Solar World can be a driver, Frank Asbeck, I think is his name, or is it, I mean, existing entrepreneurs in the solar industry, or will it be new people? Yeah? Will it be young people you find at your cool university that have this vision? that can be become a, I think we need an yes. Elon Musk, Elon Musk uh, type of person, probably not only one, but several. <laughs> several. <laughs> but, but, I mean, Elon Musk is a fantastic guy, fantastic, yeah. but he lived in a fantastic financing environment. And, and not, not, was lucky. And not all was of us lucky. have sold PayPal no. uh, at, at the right time <laughs> for a billion. <laughs> Uh, not all of us could afford to invest hundreds of millions of our own money uh, yeah. during the difficult phase when nobody would have given him money. Mm -hmm. not, all of, not all of us benefit from a stock market that is attributing a valuation to Tesla and, and to SolarCity, mm -hmm. uh, wow. which is hard to explain for conservative people like me. Uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. 
the entrepreneurial qualities we have in Europe, and, and uh, Ivan Kaspik has shown that he can survive very hard times. Uh, we have had other examples, uh, also within QSAS, uh, of people that, that could easily step into the game. It's, it, it needs a bit more than just that. It needs the financial tailwind. But I would say, really, generally speaking, here in Europe, the uh, willingness to take risks is much less developed than in the United States. In the United States, the general rule is a VC company funds 10 companies, and if two of them are successful, they are happy. If one of them is a PayPal, they forget everything else. So this is the general attitude. Here in Europe, I think any failure of a company is horrible, and frequently the founders were forced to put in their own money and mortgage their house and this kind of thing. And this is a disaster story, you know? So this easygoing uh, uh, Palo Alto, Page Mill Road uh, style where they say, okay, looks promising here, the first five. I, I got $9 million uh, for a PowerPoint presentation, as a matter of fact. You know, I had never produced a solar cell, and I got $9 million for 50% of my company. It still exists, Silicor, $200 million total investments. And we are waiting now for the moment that the PV market is going up so that we need additional silicon capacity. At the moment, we have the same oversupply of solar silicon as of the uh, uh, PV panels. But it still exists, and the plan is to make in Iceland solar silicon uh, manufacturing. But uh, I tell you, it's all timing. It's sheer luck. There are maybe 10 Musks who are never getting famous because they're never 100, probably. It's Let, uh, last, and then you no, I'll add one little aspect of, of bringing new technologies into the PV industry. I mean, if Europe continues to produce new technologies, produce very well IP protected technologies, I think the risk is smaller that we will just easily disappear. I think the, the, the stability of keeping it in Europe would be larger, actually. That's yeah. another aspect of actually bringing also completely new but powerful technologies yeah. to the market. But, but take the example of Soitec, which has put mm. our technology of yeah. the high efficiency to yes. market, and yes. Soitec made some major, major problematic decisions. I, I was very much involved in this in California with a big uh, project, and then the Soitec stockholders said, enough money spent, we don't want it. And I must say, the most promising investors at the moment in discussion come from Asia. Mm. You know, So we are at the moment in the big danger of losing this technology because no investor in Europe is willing to put up money yeah. into such but if, the, if, we, if we build up this uh, gigafactories in Europe with Asian money, well, that's not really the solution that we no. are looking for. No. That's right. <laughs> Alois, what do yeah, you want I probably have more listening now. And um, I think with regards to willingness to take risk, I think the European venture capital industry was willing to take a lot of risk between 04 and or 03 till 2010 in these seven years. And you know, there were a lot of companies that, yeah. that were funded and, 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 and didn't survive. Mm -hmm. And many had, uh, technology-wise, you, know, they, they, you mentioned one reason. The other reason was, you know, I think for such a concept, it's, you need to solve this dilemma. You, know? you cannot develop a technology company here, have not the, the, the core, it, it's different in, in your company, yeah, of course. But if it's a gigafactory in that sense for PV, it's, you need to solve this issue first. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there is risk here. And it's, I think it's also a bit too easy just to say, you know, the government has to come in and step in and has to fund it. You know? this, they, they did it. They did spend billions at the end. And I, can all, I would also say, you know, the, the, the PV industry and the suppliers and RSC, Solar World, and the others that were those days existing, they were not able to find the right formula to work together because it was somewhat, it was the funding there, but somewhat the Chinese were able to get access to the technology. No, no, no. The issue is only China, China was the only country in the world that in 2005 made this strategic decision we want this technology. And this is why they put $50 billion and made it available to all the people around there. And this was not done in Germany. This was not done in Europe. None of the governments said this is our strategic decision. And I think what we are all asking for is not handouts, but a level playing field. 
You know, and we have two options to create a level playing field. One is to erect barriers to say, if Chinese modules come at low cost because they have the big support at home, they should pay tariffs, and I'm against it, I find it wrong. But then we have to create the level field on the other side and make similar money available situations as they are present in our if, computers. If you add in Europe all the feed-in tariffs that were spent all over in the European Union, and we have only... There was no help for the industry. Feed-in tariff helped the Chinese at the end because they yeah, had yeah. the investment but Because money. We, we, the industry in Europe was not smart enough. They didn't have the money yeah, they, they, available they were, to yeah, expand. They were not smart enough. You know? They did, to I a mean, certain extent. You know, it was if the market they would forces, have but the 50 billion were spent in Europe too, much more than 50 billion. <laughs> well, I mean, the Chinese 50 billion came to Europe to the equipment manufacturers, as you know. That, that's how the game was. Yeah, but, but from uh, the government spent 50 yeah. billion. Yeah. The government but access to investment money is a key issue in Europe. Absolutely. And definitely, if there is a hype, and you were absolutely right, between 2006 and 10, there was a big hype in solar technology, and then investment money went, and now we are on the other flip side of the coin, and nobody wants to invest there. Let's do the following to end this panel. Um, I think the best panel I ever moderated. <laughs> oh, he says this each because time. I'm hardly needed here. <laughs> um, are you uh, willing, the two of you, to spend a little bit of time in a workshop to continue discussing this? Yeah? Okay, so we recruited two mentors for you. Who else wants to participate in this workshop? Please raise your hand. Okay. Yeah, you send me an email and, uh, and uh, I organize it, okay? It will be of the record, but it will be very important. Let's hijack the solar industry back again from the Chinese, okay? And let's not repeat the same mistake again. All right. Let's have lunch.